one of the most difficult elements of being a landlord is dealing with unruly tenants who don't pay rent. It's more frustrating when they leave without warning, leaving behind a huge mess that will take ages to clean up. What happened to me was far worse than any of that, and more like one of those terrifying ghost stories you hear about. My property was in a good neighborhood and in good repair, so when I realized they fled, I was a little concerned. They resided in the house for over 8 months and had paid the rent on time, right up until they took off. When I got a call from one of my neighbors telling me they heard strange noises, I went over to investigate. From the outside, the place looked fine, but when I got inside, I nearly threw up. The filth and stench was awful. It seemed as though they deliberately let the place go, but I felt like there was something more sinister going on. I tried not to cry as I walked around to survey the wreckage, then I heard a sloshing sound from upstairs. Being alone made it harder to investigate. I knew I had to go upstairs and even though the electricity was still connected, I took my time to get there. The strange sloshing sounds grew louder and louder with each step. As I approached the top of the stairs, I also heard moaning. I wasn't sure if the voice was human, if it was the air conditioning, the plumbing, or even an animal. It was none of those. Although I didn't know at the time, I had a hunch that I was about to come across something not of this earth. For some unknown reason, I kept going, even though I was trembling and shuddering while my legs went to jelly. As soon as I put my hand on the bathroom door, the sloshing and moaning stopped. I opened the door. What happened next was so surreal. I was sure that I was in the middle of a nightmare. It was so much worse. The light flickered as my eyes were distracted by the terrible grime and mold that had taken over. At first, I didn't see the woman peering over the edge of the bath. Then I saw the black holes where her eyes were supposed to be. I wish this was just one of those made up stories. Frozen in spot, I could only watch as she slapped a wet hand over the edge and onto the floor. Her long, dark, bedraggled hair clung to her twisted body. Her skin was almost translucent and streaked with blood. I don't mind telling you that I had peed myself without noticing. Then I jumped when the other hand hit the floor. Her face was focused on me as she pulled herself up over the rim of the tub, while the moaning started again. The sensible side of me tried to rationalize with the scene. That's why, with a shaky voice, I said, Can I can I help you? I regretted those words as her face became more grotesque. I still can't believe what I saw next. Her face opened up like a flip top trash can as the top of her jaw spread backwards. It looked like she was turning inside out as she slithered towards me. I screamed, turned around, and raced off. Then the police arrived. They never found the body. They never found the slithering monster, and I thought I was going crazy. I wish that was the case, as it would have been easier to believe. On our honeymoon, my husband and I traveled to a remote fishing village and rented a quaint cottage for privacy. Mark is an avid fisherman and while I enjoy seafood, I prefer to read or write while he enjoys his passion. Once we arrived, we unpacked and lit a fire in preparation for a romantic wedding night. A thunderstorm started whipping up and we decided to huddle in front of the fire and share haunted stories just for fun. Later on, while Mark was sleeping soundly, I tossed and turned, experiencing extreme anxiety for some reason. Not wanting to disturb him, I got up and padded down to the kitchen to make a soothing cup of peppermint tea. While I was sipping on my tea, I heard a tapping on the glass door. At first I thought it was branches from one of the trees. It only took me a minute to realize that the tapping was coming from what I thought were human knuckles. I went over to the door slowly, dropping my tea as a flash of lightning lit up the patio, revealing a figure at the door. I screamed when I saw her terrifying face. As the lightning continued to flash, I saw a wild-haired female with her palms on the glass, glaring at me. I yelled, what do you want? Watching her crazy curly hair thrashing around in the wind while she focused on me. Chills ran down my spine when her mouth stretched into an evil grin. 
Then she slammed the glass with her hands. I ran up the stairs and woke Mark up, pleading with him to follow me downstairs and confront that woman. He raced on ahead of me and protectively held his hand out to hold me back before going to the door. I looked over his shoulder and saw that she had disappeared. He turned the lights on and grabbed a flashlight. He told me to stay put while he searched the property. I stood shaking in fear as I waited for him to return. There's nothing out there, he said. I tried to explain that I hadn't hallucinated that woman, but he talked me into coming back to bed with him. He was soon snoring away and I continued to lie there in a full-blown state of anxiety while the storm raged on. I began to finally drift off to sleep as the tapping began again. I didn't wake Mark because I didn't want to annoy him. I got up and slowly went down the stairs. When I reached the bottom, I peered around the corner to look at the door. I could still hear the tapping, but she was not there. I went closer to the door and puzzled over where she was. Turning around to turn the lights on, I couldn't believe my eyes. There she was, inside the house, glaring at me. I screamed and I backed against the door, horrified to still feel the tapping on the glass while she stomped towards me. The lightning continued flashing while her hair flowed around her face, whipped up by the wind now blowing inside. She was stripping wet and her evil eyes were staring and menacing. I was way too petrified to scream again. I slid down the door and I started shaking uncontrollably while her mouth opened wide. Horrified to see that she had no teeth, her mouth was like a deep black hole and I felt like I was being sucked in. A terrible sound, like a hellish vortex filled the air, while the woman closed in and leaned over me. I thought I was going to be absorbed through her mouth. I felt like I was swirling upwards until the lights came on. I opened my eyes and I saw Mark looking down. The creepy, ghostly woman was gone, but to this day, I can still feel the terrifying vortex waiting for me.